Hey guys, Control here. Today I'm here to talk to you guys about the first deck that I've hit a rank 1 legend with in Wild in Kobolds and Catacombs. The deck is Agri Ballad. It's absolutely ridiculous. Paladin's got a few new tools this expansion which are just absolutely insane. Number 1, Call to Arms. This card is absolutely ridiculous. It's a 4 mana card that recruits 3 cards that cost 2 or less from your deck. So in Wild, in general, what you're going to be pulling are cards like Ship's Cannon, Celestia Deckhand, Haunted Creeper, Shielded Minibot, basically just overpowered imbalanced cards, and you get three of them. And then they also get drawn from your deck, which is absolutely ridiculous as well. And then played. The next new feature from the deck, which is also insanely crazy, is Corridor Creeper, which is a 7 mana 5-5 five five that costs one less for each minion that's died on board while this is in your hand. And surprisingly, in a deck with cards like Haunted Creeper, uh, Patches of Pirate and other Pirates, and Muster for Battle, you can zero mana 5-5s five on like turn two or three. It's absolutely insane, and the card just really breaks the deck. To follow that up, you have the legendary weapon, Valineer. Uh, just as a little bit of top end, it's not one of the most crucial cards in the deck, but it's just something nice that often deals about 16 damage in a game, which is quite good for getting there against control decks. Beyond that, you have just a general aggro paladin strategy, where you run Righteous Protector, so see deck hand, and Lost in the Jungle in the one drop slot. In the two drop slot, you run Haunted Creeper, Knife Juggler, Shielded Minibot, and Ship's Cannon. All great pulls from Call to Arms. Three drop slot gets a little bit interesting because you only run South Sea Captain, then you run three weapons. Rallying Blade and two Muster for Battles. Uh, the reason for that is Muster for Battle helps you spread and Rallying Blade helps buff your Divine Shields and three damage is imperative in the metagame currently. The other key card that really helps you cycle through your deck extremely quickly because you dump your hand fast is Divine Favor. And again, with Call to Arms, that card often draws you very, very good cards from your deck that are often top end cards because the lower mana cards are often one mulligan for and two pulled from Call to Arms. So you're often gonna get cards that cost, you know, three plus from Divine Favor, which is awesome against slow decks. Last thing, the 4-drop slot, you have Keeper of Old Dominion Call to Arms, just great cards. Uh, Sun Keeper Tareem, obviously, a uh, very, very broken Paladin card as well. And then again, to top it off, Valineer and Corridor Creeper. So I'm just going to throw you guys into some gameplay. Uh, this is going to be me queuing on Rank 1 Legend. And again, this deck is insanely broken right now. If you want to get Legend and Wild, you want to play a great, aggressive deck, this is the one you need to try. I heard Druid Smash is this deck. <clears throat> okay, so I have an okay opening play, so these three cards uh, reduce this card's cost fairly decently. Um, so I have a turn and 1-2 play, which is awesome, and then quarter creepers. You're roughly going to come out on turn 3, which is awesome. The problem is, I'm in a very unfavored matchup, and I'm coming on rank 1 legend against somebody in the dumpster right now. Kept three cards, it's terrible. Uh, if you watch the way that he mulls, so you can see how many he keeps. We're on the play, though, versus Aggredrude, which is good. So we start with our um, Living Roots play. That's what we're going to go for here, Living Roots. Two on ones. Dire Mold beats Living Roots. Muster for battle is a great pickup in this matchup. Uh, and we have a 1, 2, 3, 4 curve and a Corridor Creeper to curve out with in there as well. I believe what I'm going to lose to this game if I do lose is Muster for battle or early AoE buffs. One of the two. Buffing that up to a 3, 5 is good. I have 4 power on board, 5 with Muster for battle, so I clear that next turn. Second Dire Mold, that is good. Trades a 1 1, that's fine. So now we play Muster for Battle here, on uh, we full trade into the 3-4. We want to clear the card. Our Corridor Creeper is a 4-4. Next turn we can keep Revolt them in one of our 1-1s, value trade into his minion. Trade off the trash cards and then play Corridor Creeper in most cases. In some cases what we'll look to do instead is play Knife Juggler and spread a little bit more. He's trading there and then he plays his own Corridor Creeper, that's perfectly fine. We can just keep Revolt them in his and play ours. Trade, 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 develop. I still have not played any pirates, so my best draw next turn will be Sousi Deckhand or Call to Arms. We have Ship's Cannon and Juggler, which means that any pirate draw we get is going to be very impactful. Uh, moving forward, that's probably going to be what uh, seals the game in the next turn or two, is likely going to be the Sousi Deckhand. The fact that he has to serve Finley and Hero Power is quite bad for him here. I still think based on the one card kept in his hand here, okay, so he just got double Corridor Creeper, so he got the Nuts. Um, it's not very good for us. So we got a Corridor Creeper again as well, which is good. If we tweet here, our Corridor Creeper goes down to 5. If we trade into another one, it goes down to 4. Um, the question is whether we want to take that right now or not. The odds of him having Living Mana here aren't too high, which is very good for us. Can also just double value trade and play it if we want. That might just be the play to be honest. 
I don't really want to go face, and I don't think there's too many punishes because we have the, the ping weapon, which is quite good. I kind of just like double value trade and play a 5 mana 5-5 five, five here. Save the cannon and the juggler. I don't think they're going to be very impactful in this exact turn because a lot of his minions have high health. Uh, healing totem is a problem, so you could argue that we want to trade that instead. Like, it might be here and here. Uh, you want damage on the 5-5 five, because five, that's what he's going to want to trade with, right? If he value trades, it's fine. We have juggle and cannon shots. Impactful decision. This is a 5-4. He doesn't have a ping here power. This being a 3-5 is not a big deal. I think I trade here and then the healing totem. I do have the pings from the juggler, so just removing the power could be the better play. Lady Creeper, I'm not going to swing with the weapon because with the pings here, the juggles are very, very relevant. I only get two at the moment. Get a lot more if I draw any pirate. Uh, even something like patches is quite good to draw here. It sounds kind of funny, but the two random damage is strong. And again, I'll always lose to living mana, but that'll be the only card that's going to straight up beat me here. Card for card. Haunted Creeper is quite good into this. Uh, Power of the Wild here is good. He does get the ping trade. This means that the healing totem roll is good. Trades a 3-4. That's perfectly acceptable. We're going to really want to pick up a deck hand here. Really badly. Uh, Divine Favor is absolute garbage. Yeah, it's hot trash here, unfortunately. So we can go Juggler, uh, Cannon, Hero Power. See what the outcome is. Hope the high roll. Juggler, Cannon, Hero Power. I'm never going to trade there. Or sorry, I'm never going to trade there is what I mean. Probably just here and then value trade the 2-4 is likely the play. I could also just go face, but I think this is better. To just do this and then value trade here. Again, save the weapon charge. I don't have too many weapons in the deck. I have what? Muster for battle, rallying blade, and Sunky Praturing. That's it. So he gets the totem, which is quite good. He's probably going to trade the juggler. Uh, Jeeves is insane for him. I get initial divine favor value and might just opt to play whatever we draw instead. Again, he picks up Living Mana, it's game. I lose every time. Picks up Savage Ori, wins on board. Uh, we're in a very, very bad spot here. I need the initial card draw and pick up a Pirate here. That's how I win, I get Captain. Or sorry, Deckhand. Jungle is very good, Deckhand's great. Uh, this pulls Patches out of my deck, which is phenomenal here. I'm not going to trade initially, I'm just going to see what happens with Juggles, because I want the highest odds of hitting any minions at all. That's fine, and that's good. So now we want to maximize the amount of minions we can clear here. Uh, so the weapon charge is probably going to go into a 1-1. One, one. We want to keep called arms. We want to be trading because we want to lower the odds of him giving living mana because that's what's going to win him the game if he does win is the living mana. So we're probably going to want to trade there. Just basically full trade, play Lost in the Jungle um, and send 5 face, I think. So we trade here, we trade here, we swing there, and we trade trade. Okay. The trading order is kind of irrelevant. It doesn't really matter how we do it. As long as we send 5 face and start to get there, it's good. He'll always redevelop, um, so what our Call to Arms is likely to pull now is Righteous Protector is the most likely outcome, which is quite good. Uh, what Righteous Protector does is it protects my board, kind of. So Patches plus Roar, Patches Trade, and then Living Mana, that's fine. So we can pull Pirates off this, which is quite strong. Ship's Cannon is really good. So we can play Ship's Cannon, uh, trade one of the Living Manas, and then... Play card called arms. We only have one deckhand in the deck, but still, it's good to do. I think. In the case that we do pull deckhand, juggler is good. Okay. No real favorable rolls. Uh, we can trade one to give him second power of the wild. I don't really want to trade my cannon off. I kind of just want to go face. I'm fine using the ping here. So the way that his turn works is he trades, he trades, he trades, he trades, and he has three attacks left. Uh, I can value trade one. If I pop this, the problem is the outcome is just generally not going to be that good. I'd have to trade here. Which might be worthwhile in the case that he doesn't have second. We can clear a lot, especially with the creeper tokens. Makes the weapon swing a lot better. And then, I mean, we don't get hero power, but it's still good, I think. So in the high roll outcome, it was quite good, I think. We can bump here, and in this case, he has four minions, and most of them die here. He actually can't even get through the protector if we do this, but I figure the five face damage is more relevant. Because Savage Roar doesn't get him through the 1-2 taunts any easier than he's already getting through them right now. The issue for us now is that we don't have very many good draws left, and he does, is the issue. He can spread and then use an area of effect buff here. If this is Mark of Lotus, I'll lose. It's not, so we're fine. He has to full trade into these. We have tokens on board, and we're in an okay spot now. Uh, Sunkeeper Tareem, so this is 15 damage if we get a hero power on it. Oh wait, no, we win, we win. We win. Okay, good game. So this is our, our next win on Rank 1 Legend uh, with the Egger Paladin deck against uh, Egger Druid, which is an unfavored matchup for us. Very good victory here, and again, that's just one win on Rank 1. Good stuff.